because if you're going to be as big as you want to become then you need to protect your brand you have to fight your corner my channel my name is Chengatai and today I'm going to be talking to you about brand protection I have spoken to you guys about how you can make more money in 2022 and I said that starting a business but now you've got that business it's time to protect it and make sure no one takes away your profit or your reputation so let's get started brand protection is preventing someone or some entity from infringing your brand by illegally using your intellectual property or your brand name. Let's say after seeing my video in the beginning of 2022, you started a business and you called it Green Leaf. And then you see that someone else is selling their clothing with the same name Green Leaf. That is an infringement of your brand name and your trademark. So you're probably thinking like, why? Why do I care if someone else is using my name if I'm still making loads of money from my own brand? Well, imagine that someone is looking for an outfit and you know you have your brand Greenleaf, but maybe they haven't even come across it yet, but they're shopping and then they come along this outfit that someone has created a cheap knockoff of your item they buy it and maybe it doesn't wash well and now they're thinking well green leaf is just rubbish isn't it and that's really bad for your reputation and it affects your profits too it's going to dilute the strength of your brand also these copies sometimes are related to loads of scams for example someone could create a website called greenleafspain.com and create literally a replica of your website and then start selling either really cheap knockoffs or they might not even send anything to the person who's bought from that website and it's a complete scam they've just taken their money but this person they think it was you they think oh the brand Greenleaf that everyone's raving about just scammed me I'm gonna go to Daily Mail and let them know now your reputation is going down even though it was nothing related to you so these are the type of things you want to protect you can get rid of some of these websites there's ways to get rid of websites there's ways to get rid of stuff on social media there's ways to get rid of things on marketplaces that are affecting your reputation and affecting your brand so earlier I mentioned intellectual property and you may be thinking what on earth is intellectual property? I get that a lot. I just realised I didn't tell you why I am even able to tell you any of this stuff. Well, in my day job when I'm not here on YouTube or on TikTok or being a mother, I work in intellectual property. So I work within a fashion brand and I deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis, which is why I have this knowledge and I want to share it with you because I have a lot of friends who own small brands and I find that they're not even considering implementing a brand protection strategy, which they need because I envision that they will all grow to be really successful brands that are known globally and if they're going to get to that place they're going to meet a lot of copiers along the way and they need to prevent any impacts on their reputation or on their profits so let's get back to what i was talking about ip covers anything that is a creation of the mind so it could be an invention it could be song artistic painting artistic works we basically come across these inventions of the mind every single day someone once created this chair that i'm sitting on or this camera and it was an invention that was protected by a patent i'm sure also the brand that manufactures my camera is called sony that's protected by a trademark so we interact with ip daily but today i won't speak about all the various types of intellectual property or the way that they can be infringed today i'm just going to focus on why you should consider brand protection and start thinking about it because most likely you haven't even thought about it you did your one trademark of your logo and maybe the name of your company and you're thinking that's it job's done baby got a lot of work because if you're going to be as big as you want to become then you need to protect your brand. And the number reason why you need to consider brand protection is because no one else is gonna do it for you. Online platforms, Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, AliExpress, do not care. Well, I shouldn't say that they don't care, but they're not going to proactively do anything about it until you tell them to do something about it or until you start enforcing on the platform. Sorry if you can hear my son in the background, he's home today and if I don't record this today, 
I'm just not going to get a video out and get my together. So basically, you have to fight your corner. Don't wait for someone to come back here. You need to fight yourself. Because really and truly, those platforms are probably going to make it worse for you if you don't do anything about it. They'll start promoting that infringer, that counterfeiter, that person who's copying and ripping off your brand more than they promote you just because you're staying shtum. So start talking because eventually you're going to lose money and your reputation. I'm going to keep talking about that because I need you to understand this is going to affect your pocket. And really, you're letting people steal your idea and your hard work. Imagine all the work that you did and people are just coming on, riding on your coattail. It's not fair, is it? Another reason why it's important for you to implement a brand protection strategy is that people are less likely to trust a brand if there's loads of fakes around. You can probably hear my son, so sorry. For example, there's some designer brands that I probably won't even buy the real thing from because there's so many fakes everywhere. If you walk out, people will just probably assume that you're wearing a fake anyway. So what's the point? You might as well buy from a brand that you know has a good reputation and, and you know you're definitely not going to get a fake. So I'm going to give you three things to consider as I end this video and I want you to think about them before my next video next week where I go into the types of infringements and ways for you to protect your brand. So one, you need to consider an IP portfolio, so an intellectual property portfolio. So basically, you need to just consider what things have you protected. So at the moment, I'm assuming that you've protected your brand logo and your brand name. And unless you are clued up and you have someone in-house or an external lawyer who's advising you, you probably haven't protected any more than that. And so maybe now it's time to consider, perhaps you own a hair care line and your products all have various different names for each product or maybe you have a clothing line and you have various different names for your t-shirts so maybe this t-shirt is called Lucy Lou you can trademark Lucy Lou has a good reputation everyone knows that Lucy Lou associate that with green leaf you're selling this t-shirt and then someone goes on AliExpress and starts selling a t-shirt called Lucy Lou not even green leaf but Lucy Lou just the product name you can get that taken down. You can have that product taken down because you have that trademark, it's yours, and they are infringing your mark. It may not even look like your product. It could look like any other t-shirt, nothing related to you. However, they're using it within class 25, which is for clothing and footwear, for trademarks. So you can get that product taken down and enforce your rights. But I need to give you a warning. You need to make sure you do your searches first before you start protecting your t-shirt because what if there's a whole brand called Lucy Lou and now you're just stepping on their toes by coming in with your t-shirt so I think you also need to consider that you don't just name your product anything do your searches first do your research first make sure no other brand especially within your industry so if you're selling hair care products and you call your product one name make sure that no one else in the I'll say the beauty industry is using that name that is because they can come and send you a cease and desist or worse take you to court for using that name because it is legally theirs they have trademarked it so you need to do your clearance searches first before you start just deciding any name if you're going to trademark it also you need to consider what are my priority markets okay i'm selling a lot of t-shirts in sweden or i want to start selling a lot in japan so you need to consider applying for protection in those countries so that once you start selling there you're not getting a bunch of copiers and if you are you can get rid of them quickly so you're not confusing your customer or affecting your reputation Number two, another thing for you to consider, which relates to my last point in number one, is doing your research. So you need to get some intelligence about your business. So find out where are my customers? Where are they shopping? How can I help them always find my brands? Where are the infringers? Do your research. Look on all e-com platforms. Have a look and see which products. It might not even be the product that you expect to be copied. That's the one that's been copied a lot. And lastly, you want to consider looking through social media because social media is a busy, busy place and you'll have one random person who's selling your brand next to counterfeit Nike trainers and but you can get rid of, even if it's just your post, you can get rid of the post where they're selling a counterfeit version of your product or if someone has taken your name, you can report that page on social media. All these platforms, eBay, Amazon, 
Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, they allow you to make reports and you can upload your trademark certificate or you can make your claim or your copyright claim, whatever it may be, to report that page or account or listing and get rid of it. Obviously, sometimes that person may come back and disagree, but you can still fight your corner and I think it's very important that you start doing that and considering that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's slightly different and it's not exactly finance. Let me know what else you want me to talk about within brand protection. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye.